You know, I grew up in Ohio, in Southwest Ohio, in a very, you know, white centered space. And that system served me well from the perspective of, um, you know, yeah, I was able to read, write, get math done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like ed academically, I succeeded. And I, it enabled me to go into college and succeed and have a, you know, a financially sustainable life, you know? And I don't discount that at all um, because it, I did survive and I was able to support myself and support others, you know? However, it disserved me in many ways because it did not honor me as a young black girl. You know, it centered whiteness as success or proximity to whiteness as success. That was the standard, right? It did not honor, right, the fact that I had this inherent worth. It did not talk about um, systemic racism and how that was at the root of how um, my family experienced life, the struggles that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And it didn't teach me that I had the power to actually begin to change that. Like I could actually be a part of changing it, right? And, and so in that ways, it disturbed me. Mm -hmm. And so as I think about, um, and you know, and it's the same reason why critical race theory is being fought across the country, right? Because that's where the power lies, not only for our babies, but for the white kids too, you know? <laughs> who and go, the truth. Right, and yeah. it's the truth. And who are gonna raise up against their own, you know, their own ancestors, you know what I mean? So, um, so when I think about like this work, um, I think about, those stories, right? And how when we think about educating our young people through this movement, it is about that power, right? It is about, you know, that cultural identity uh, affirmation, that cultural competency. It is about like, right, like, let's help you develop a critical lens and some tools to actually, you know, self-determine your future. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so when we have folks who are leading in that way um, and who are coming together to lead in that way, like that to me is what, when I think about like the, what educational freedom looks like, how do we start to move more toward it? It's like, that is it, right? Cause we can have all the leaders of color we want doing the same type of stuff that we've always done and they can get together, you know, and they can organize. But if we don't have that, you know, if we're not leading in a different way that really empowers our communities, you know, because we, you know, we're not really gonna, we're not gonna achieve the, these ideas mm -hmm. of like educational freedom uh, or freedom through educating. Mm -hmm. And in leading in that way, I wanna go back to what I said earlier, because there's, in order to be able to lead in that way, there's the integrating of the of the of the of the hard heart skills and the heart and the heart and it's skills. all hard. I would argue, and it's, it's all like hard. the head. It's, it's like head and heart, maybe, it or is, yeah, the analytical and the the heart. The yeah. opportunity for leaders who are leading that work for those of us who have gotten the training from Surge, mm -hmm. who have on who who have um, integrated. I often say like it's like putting together your professional self. Like Surge is like yo. Like you can be your whole self for real. Like who you are at home <laughs> and who you are at work can be the same person. And it's yeah. like the first time for me, I felt yeah. this sense of wholeness. Like I could be, I could actually be my whole self in any place that I mm. go. And then we yeah. go into the world and we lead that way. I think yeah. the opportunity for us to continue to learn from each other out with intention and not yeah. um, by coincidence right. outside of Surge, right. there's, I'm like, I see all kinds of opportunities yeah. <laughs> for after yeah. search.